Every year, I share not predictions, but technological trends in healthcare and medicine that I think it's worth paying attention to. It's my job as the medical futurist to look at every major announcement, press release, and study out there to make sure we find those trends that stand out of the crowd. Here are 10 of them. First, trends that I'm very positive about. Number one is my boldest statement of the whole video. 2025 will be the year of practical longevity. Of course, longevity research has been around for decades, but what I mean by practical longevity is that we might want to wait for a miracle drug to appear that will reverse aging, but until then, we can do so much more to maximize our lifespan. We can understand the role of medical screenings and how we can change lifestyle habits with the use of data by using artificial intelligence, generative AI, digital health tools. There's a whole bunch of things we can do to maximize our lifespan. As Brian Johnson's Don't Die is transforming itself into quite a worldwide movement, and even Eric Topol will publish a book about longevity and aging, this is the year when longevity will finally become practical. Number two, AI scribes on the rise. We have covered voice-to-text applications on this channel already. These are the applications that can transcribe a physician-patient interaction into a written text. But AI scribes represent a step forward from that idea. These are amazing AI-based technologies, not just being able to transform the text, but even understand the context. So AI scribes can even transform the written text, the interactions, into medical records. This is a huge step forward because it would allow physicians to spend enough precious time with patients, and not focusing on administrations all the time. Now a few trends I hope to see in 2025. Number three is about Ozempic and digital health. There has been a huge revolution about GLP-1 agonists, Ozempic and the other medications that lead to weight loss and help patients with diabetes better manage their conditions. But all these medications have only been approved by regulators with a calorie reduced diet and exercise. So digital health comes into the picture. Without exploiting the technologies of digital health, it's almost impossible to keep patients on a good weight loss or diabetes management program. So I hope that pharma companies making GLP-1 agonists will realize that they need to reach out to digital health companies and create packages of medications with these amazing evidence-based technologies. Number four. Continuous glucose monitors are not only for patients with diabetes. I've tested many CGMs before, even published a review video about it on this channel, and I sparked quite a debate with patients with diabetes. I got the feedback that I shouldn't be using a technology that was intended for patients with diabetes. But I think, in fact, CGMs can contribute so much even to the lives of patients without that condition. By using CGMs for two weeks, I learned so much about how to adjust my diet or simply how I react to different kinds of foods, how spikes in my blood sugar affects my mental health or even my efficiency while working. Number five, generative AI across the healthcare spectrum. The US Food and Drug Administration, the FDA, now has over 1,000 approved AI-based medical technologies, but none of them is based on generative AI yet, even though some companies started publishing generative AI marketplaces. So physicians, medical practices, hospitals don't have to develop their large language models themselves, but they can just reach out to these companies, choose a one app from a marketplace and start implementing that right away in practice. That's the future for generative AI. Number six, small language models for the masses. Of course, it's great if you have the privilege to be able to use a large language model like ChatGPT or DeepSeek or Claude, especially if you have a paid subscription. But for billions around the world, that's not gonna be a viable option. SLMs could represent a solution for them. These are small language models that can run on even on a phone without using the internet. So they get a sense of using generative AI without the amazing computing power and bandwidth needed for running large language models. Number seven, futures methods finally becoming mainstream. The era when researchers and scientists and physicians keep on sharing opinions about the future of therapeutic areas or medical specialties must come to an end. We have to use established futures methods. And I'm not only saying that because I published a book about this called Your Map to the Future, but this must be the year when a whole population finally starts using those futures methods and futures thinking becomes an everyday asset for most of us. And finally, just a few observations. So number eight, variables hit a roadblock. It seems that many companies focusing on producing or developing variable sensors, it's not enough anymore to just 
track vital signs and health parameters, but some of these companies have started to transform their variables into a sort of digital therapeutical device. A good example could be how some companies develop cough detection tools using artificial intelligence. And now some of those based on peer-reviewed evidence can become a digital therapeutical device. Number nine, a new medical team arises. The team now consists of patients and medical professionals, but the newest member will sit at that same table. Of course, I'm talking about a technological entity, artificial intelligence. I think a great example could be in dermatology. The patients could work together with dermatologists and by the same time, they could use an AI-based skin checking application. So once a year, they meet the dermatologist in person, but in the meantime, their moles, their suspicious skin lesions can be checked out by the AI-based skin checking application. And finally, number 10, it seems that hardware is very expensive. They recently published the top 100 digital health and AI companies in healthcare by the medical futurist, and 12 companies got removed from the list from 2024. Those companies feature 3D printing technologies, robotic exoskeletons, and virtual reality. So it seems like if a company uses an expensive hardware-based solution, it becomes more challenging to bring that to success. These are the top 10 trends to watch for 2025 in medical and healthcare technologies. And of course, we, the medical futurists, will keep an eye on all of these and even beyond. And hopefully you will join us on this journey throughout the whole year. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please subscribe below to get notified about every single new video we come up with. And also please go to medicalfuturist.thinkific.com where you will find our two courses, the Digital Health course and our newest one, Introduction to Artificial Intelligence in Medicine and Healthcare. See you there.